Welcome to the Galileo Capital November update. Um, I'm really pleased to, to, to be joined by Jenna. Uh, Jenna, thanks so much. And um, uh, I, know, I know you love the camera work and I know you love being uh, on, on TV. So, so I know this is tough for you, but, uh, but I appreciate it. And I'm sure our clients will as well. Thanks, Warren. Um, I think we've, we've probably been through one of the most uh, difficult times in November and, and so much has happened, you know, we, we've had, uh, well I should say October leading up now to, to November and, and we've had so much going on through the month uh, and, and I thought, you know, it's probably worthwhile as just chatting about some of the big issues that have happened and, and some of the big issues that are, that are going to happen. So, so we'll change the format a little bit and I'll be in the firing seat and you can, you can fire the questions and, and let's see how we go. Cool. So Warren, recently there was the midterm budget speech. What are your thoughts on that? I think I think the finance minister had a heck of a job. You know, I think he, he had to show uh, investors, ratings agencies, and and many of the South African sort of uh, people with capital that the government were taking things seriously. You know, that that they understood that they had to control expenditure, and at the same time there was an enormous amount of pressure on government to show how they would commit capital to growing the economy. You know, I, I think there's been this huge thing around saying, you know, you can you can cut costs, uh, and that's okay, and that's good, and you must do that. But at the same time, you have to commit capital to things that are going to start growing the economy. So how are you going to commit capital to growing the infrastructure? How are you going to create jobs in the in the in the country? And so I think he he you know he tried a very fine line between cutting good costs that were worthwhile cutting you know, and and all of that. If you look at it so much of it was around the the, the wage bill of the of the salaried employees working for government and and it's it's a big number that he's cut there. It's not as much as everyone would have hoped, but at the same time if he can get this right and I, let's not say he, he, because I think it's not, it's, it's not Tito's job, it's the government's job. If they can get that right, it does have a big impact on, on, on cutting the unnecessary costs within the country and, and hopefully giving more room to, to spend money on the things that will create jobs. And, and so from that perspective, I think he did very well. Uh, there, were, there were huge fears for, from speculators, uh, market commentators, and, and I guess just ordinary investors about wealth tax, uh, you, know, you know, those kinds of things. And if I look at what, uh, th there wasn't much ad uh, to address that in the budget. They, they did say afterwards in the question and answer session that, that exact tax changes would be discussed in February 2020. But uh, if I look at the number, they were saying that they would be increasing taxes by about 40 billion. Now, it's 40 billion over three years. And, and if there are 5 million taxpayers and you're doing it over three years, it works out to about 2,660 Rand per taxpayer. It's a number, and obviously not every taxpayer will pay exactly the same amount, but it's not the fear, the, the fear number that we had in our mind, that it, that it could be you know, 10,000 or 20,000 per taxpayer, in which case it destroys the economy. So, so I think there was there were some positives. It was a tough budget. Uh, we are all uh, a lot of us, I guess I shouldn't say all, but a lot of us would have been unhappy to see ten and a half billion going to to SAA. The finance minister was very quick to say it's not a bailout. Uh, it's a restructuring fee. The point is, it's ten and a half billion going to something that that, that people don't want to spend money on anymore. So, so I, I, d I didn't like seeing that, but I can understand that uh, that potentially there are more there are more issues with that with closing down SAA than we all understand, and it would have been great for them to explain. That. It would be really nice for someone in government to give us a co coherent reason as to why SAA is critical, not just tell us that it's critical, to explain it, and then to show us the, the future and how it can add value if, if there is more money that needs to go in. So, so I think it was an okay uh, budget. The, the, the RAND, you know, a lot of people said that the RAND weakened and the, and the markets fell immediately afterwards. Uh, that's possible, but it also coincided with the American markets uh, opening and the American markets fell a heck of a lot in the, on the same day. So, so I think that, it, again, it's never straightforward as to exactly what, what went on. So, so all in, if I had to give it a, an old school uh, pass mark, I'd say it probably got about a B um, and, and wasn't as scary as it could have been. Okay, great. And then it seems like COVID's hitting the US and Northern Hemisphere again. Um, what impact would you say is this having on the markets? It, it's it's causing enormous volatility. You know, I think uh, if we look at uh, the, the the kind of stipulations or the speculation in the past, people were saying, uh, you know, we think we're getting this under control. You know, the, the, this the, you know it wasn't as bad as everyone thought, and, and and you know economies were opening up, and and that sort of knocked to, to GDP at the time. You know, especially the the growth of the U.S. and European countries wasn't uh, as long and sustained uh, as everyone thought. So 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 there was a bit more optimism building into the economic system and the stock market system. Unfortunately, this this now the second wave 
is causing increasing uh, numbers of people going to hospital in America and in, and in Europe. And that's creating a level of fear because the question now is, uh, are they going to go into harder uh, lockdowns or more severe lockdowns and also for longer periods of time? Because if they are, it's going to have a big economic impact. And that's what's causing a lot of fear in the, in, in the market now. So, so I think that it's having a big market impact. Wh whether it's sustained is the, is the question. And, and, uh, and how will it get resolved? People always want to say, OK, so it's happening now. What's going what's to stop the problem? Uh, what will stop the problem is, is that we see increasing uh, ways of treating the, the, uh, COVID as it is at the moment, or potentially a vaccine. One or, one or two of those, they come through. And I think we, you know, the markets will rebound very strongly. So, so it is an impact. We, we are obviously desperately fearful in South Africa that we go through a second wave and it causes us to go into lockdown. The, the president did say recently that you know, the, the sort of speculation around that is nonsense, uh, that he will be the one to announce it if it does happen. And I think maybe that's my comment to, to our clients as well, is you know, you know, don't get caught up in the social media speculation, you know, your WhatsApp groups where you, or your friends are telling you that lockdown's happening tomorrow. Uh, the, the truth is we won't know. Uh, w when it happens, it'll just be announced and, and it'll then take, take place. So, so f for now, I think let's watch. But, uh, but uh, m my view is it's, it's causing market volatility, maybe not economic damage in the long term just yet. But we do have to watch. Cool. And then um, we got the US elections coming up shortly. Um, there's a lot of noise in the media about this. What, what should we be focusing on here? I think U.S. elections, uh, like any election, the first thing we need to know is that e elections are really hard to predict. Uh, and, and so, f firstly, if you want to make investment decisions around an election, you have to predict who's going to win the election. You also have to predict how investors are going to respond to the winner. So, for example, if it's Biden, you know, are people really happy about it? And by the time this goes out, it might have already happened. So, you know, we don't know if the election is going to be contested. So, so we're, we're, we're talking in advance of something. But, but uh, if Biden wins, uh, what do investors think about that? And ha do they think it's positive or do they think it's negative? In which case, will markets go up or go, or go down? And then if you're going to be an investor, you have to invest in anticipation of two sets of events, the outcome of the election and what people think about the outcome of the election. And, and, and to me, that, that's a really tricky way to, to make investment decisions. W what I would say is, you know, potentially, if you've got capital to commit to, to investments, especially overseas, but, but in South Africa as well, and there's a major election coming, rather don't commit all the capital in one shot. Rather take your decision to, to phase that capital into your investments, because that way you don't have to anticipate what's going to happen. And let, let's say markets react really badly, and you've only put in a little bit of money, then at least uh, later on you'll be able to buy more and more investments at a better price. If the markets really love uh, the, the result, then you've got some money already invested and you'll benefit from that. But, but I think that the, it is a big event. Uh, there, there's so much speculation about what, what it will do for uh, the US economy and therefore the rest of the world's economy in the future. And the truth is no one actually knows. You know, they, they want to be in the headlines. They want to uh, m make pronouncements about you know, it's going to be amazing or it's going to be terrible because only dramatic headlines will get your attention. And what I would say is you know, Warren Buffett always says, don't worry about elections when you make investment decisions. The US economy is so big, those businesses are so good that actually they work through uh, a president, you know, and, and a, a president can have a small impact on a business, not a dramatic impact on the business. And I would say the same thing about, uh, about our, ourselves in this situation. D don't worry too much. The impact is likely to be there, but it's likely to be short term. Great. And then on that note, Warren, lastly, um, have our recommendations changed at all for our clients that are looking to take money offshore? With regards to our target levels, no, I think it's uh, you know watching the rand. You know, we, we've watched the rand go from you know over seventeen to you know sixteen ten at some point, and 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 it floats around there all the time. And, and our view is that if you've got capital that needs to go overseas, and that must be part of your overall strategy, then then use below seventeen rand to the dollar. That is the right level in in our view. Uh, and and if it's over that level, be careful. Uh, be, you know, be conscious around that. If you're going to send money out in pounds, our, our level is about twenty rand fifty to the pound but but if it's slightly more than that that's okay uh, and and so no our recommendations they haven't changed uh, we will adjust if there is some major new news uh, but potentially if there's a COVID vaccine we might need to actually do, uh, you know do it at a lower level to to the rand dollar but but for now knowing what we know in the world uh, we, we're going to keep our recommendations the same 
Great. Thanks, Warren. Thanks, Jenna. So, so you know, for our clients out there, what we would say is, you know, stay the course. Uh, don't get too uh, rattled by the, the noise uh, around what's going on with elections. We you know we've got municipal elections next year as well. And and, and for now, let, let's watch. Uh, let's not get too excited about the news around a, a vaccine or speculation. We can get excited when, you know, the, the, the medical scientists say we've got an approved vaccine and it does work. Until then, don't don't anticipate uh, what's going on. Uh, and and, and stay safe out there. You know, these are crazy times. And, and you know, the, the thing we can all do now is look after ourselves, look after our families, look after our colleagues and, and do our bit to, to make sure this thing doesn't spread and affect us more. Great. Thank you.